Welcome to the Snowmere Overview. In this video, we will see the basic interface and usage of Snowmere. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the first screen you will see after installing and configuring Snowmere. I have installed it on my computer, connected it to my personal service now instance, and set the data replication to my local MySQL database. After you log into Snowmere, you will see the overview of tables which are being replicated to the local database. Adding another table to synchronize is pretty straightforward and we can do it in just three simple steps. First, press the New Synchronization button. Now, just select the table you want to synchronize. For example, we choose the CMDBCI table, which is the root of the configuration database, and click Next. There are a couple of options on this page, which will be explained in next video tutorials. The most important option here is the list of columns to synchronize. To the left is the list of all columns in the selected table, and to the right are the ones selected for synchronization. We can either select all columns, or just pick the columns we need, for example for reporting purposes. Let's say you want asset tag, category, and cost of the configuration item, so we just double-click the value and we can see this added to the list on the right. We can also filter the columns for easier navigation. This way, we select name and serial number of the configuration item. We can also count the number of records which are going to be downloaded. As we can see, it's over 2700. We click Next and here comes the last step, which is setting up the schedule according to which the synchronization will take place. Most common use is synchronizing once a day, so we choose the interval daily. It is recommended to set the time to when the instance is used the least. According to that, we pick a time like 4am, as we don't expect many people to work with the instance at the time, and click Finish. We are moved back to the overview, and you can notice the new synchronization we just created is scheduled to run at 4 o'clock in the morning. We can indeed synchronize it manually right now by selecting the table and clicking the Synchronize button. On the first run, Snowmirror performs a full download, which means downloading all the records that are in the CMDBCI table. You can watch the progress in real time on this page. All records have been downloaded, so we can click the synchronization name to go to its detail. Here, we can see the details, as well as change the options of the synchronization. Another neat feature is the Simple Data Viewer, which allows us to see the local version of the synchronized table. We can see that the table contains the columns we chose to synchronize earlier, with data types mapped to the ServiceNow counterpart. The last thing we want to show you in this video is that every subsequent synchronization run is an incremental one. This means that only the new or modified records are downloaded. To demonstrate this, we choose the first configuration item in this list and modify it in the ServiceNow instance. Let's change its name from MacBook Pro to MacBook Air and save it. If we run the synchronization again, only one record is downloaded and if we move to the data viewer, we can see that the name was modified to MacBook Air. This was the overview of the main functionality of Snowmirror. If you are interested, you are more than welcome to watch our next video tutorials. Thank you for watching!